at this open source summit. I'm not a native English speaker, so feel free to ask questions if there is something not very clear. And you could also send me an email with your ideas after this sharing, and I will reply to you as soon as possible. I am an open source developer currently working at Pinkup. We develop TidyB, an open source NewSQL database. Here are some of my personal open source projects. One of them is the uh, C coroutine library. Another one is about Paxos algorithm. Today, our topic is how the CFS algorithm could be used in coroutine scheduling. Let's start with some benchmarks. We are programmers and we all love benchmarks, right? At the very start, please allow me to introduce two terminologies. Uh, one is the event intensive task. Most of the time in its life cycle is waiting for events, just name its off CPU, and only a very small part of the time is doing CPU computing. CPU intensive task. Most of or even all of its life cycle is doing CPU computing, just name it on CPU. And only a very small part of its time or has never been instead of waiting for events. Here is our first benchmark. F data sync latency benchmark. First, we open a log file and loop about n times and write four kilobytes data to this file if that sync and then lose the content. Our test environment is on an L-Core Linux virtual machine with an exclusive NVMe SSD attached. Here is our first benchmark result. Uh, one is C version, another is Go version. We could see the difference is very small. The result is not bad, right? Actually, the C version should be a little faster than the Go version because the Go version uh, has the scheduled overhead in the Go runtime. Here is our second benchmark. FDATASYNC with CPU intensive task benchmark in Go. At first, we loop about n times each create a Go routine, uh, which is the CPU intensive task, and then exactly the same as before. And the CPU intensive task is an infinite loop which contains a checksum of one megabyte byte slice. Here is our second benchmark result. When the CPU intensive task amount is zero, uh, the result is same as our first benchmark. But when the CPU intensive task amount grows, the F data sign latency become worse and worse. This is not a very good result, right? Because for many Go applications, CPU intensive tasks is simply unavoidable. So this benchmark result tells us that for those applications, such latency penalty may, may already exist for a very long time. So what's going on here? Basically, the current Go uh, runtime scheduler uses a round robin scheduling strategy. Here is a simple demo. The demo below is not meant to work exactly like the Go runtime scheduler. Go may evolve in the future. The purpose of this demo is to show that in some cases, round robin is not a good choice. On the left of our um, figure, it's a Goroutine ready queue. Uh, on the right is the CPU. A is F data sync goroutine, and B, C, D are CPU intensive goroutines. We assume that the time slice is 20 milliseconds at T0, time T0. A is scheduled to run. And because A uh, is event intensive, it only consumes very few CPU time. We just neglect it in this demo. Then B is scheduled to run. While B is running, A finished its event waiting and become runnable again. 
And then at time t0 plus 20 milliseconds, B is suspended and C continues to run. Well, because our time slice is 20 milliseconds. At time t0 plus uh, 40 milliseconds, it's time D to run. And then finally, we got A resumed to run at t0 plus 60 milliseconds. So that's why we got worse epidetic latency when this is running with CPU intensive tasks. So how to solve this problem? We know that the scheduling strategy of our of the current implementation of Go uh, is basically run Robin. But in practical application scenarios, priority relationships may need to exist between different types of task or even between tasks of the same type. For example, if you want to use Go to implement a storage engine, in general, IO tasks should have higher priority than any other CPU intensive tasks. Because in this case, the CPU, the system bottleneck is more likely to be in this guy or not CPU, right? For another example, we may use Go to implement a network service, which is required to ensure the latency of some certain lightweight tasks, even while other Go things are quite CPU intensive. However, in the current implementation of Go runtime, if there are a certain number of CPU intensive tasks that need to run for a very long time, it will inevitably impact the scheduling latency. And because Go routine scheduling is quite like the thread scheduling, so let's test this scenario on Linux kernel and see what happens. We do this test on a one called Linux virtual machine. As we could see, the current CPU load of this system is very low. And we could assume that all these processes are event intensive. On the left, the pin command is running, which uh, has, a, has a destination address is our router of this LAN. The SH demo process is this SH session server, which is event intensive too. Now we create a CPU intensive task by simple, simply using the best script. Each top on the right tells us that the current system reached its maximum CPU load. After waiting a while, we could see the pin latency on the left still very st stable and seems no big differences with the previous one. And our SSH session still feels very smooth as we saw, the Linux kernel scheduler performed very well. Uh, maybe we could compare the thread model provided by kernel with the Go, Go team model provided by Go, in addition to the inherent low cost and high concurrency advantages of Go team over threads. Some very useful mechanism in the kernel thread model cannot be found in the Go team model of Go, at least not yet. For example, uh, the dynamic modification of scheduling policy and priority mechanism, including adaptive priority adjustment. The scheduler of the initial version of Linux kernel is quite primitive too, but with the continuous development of the kernel, more and more applications have, have higher and higher requirements for kernel scheduler. And the kernel scheduler has been keeping evolving until today's CFS scheduler. That should also apply to Go. A real mature scheduler will make Go even greater. So let's introduce our CPU Worker. CPU Worker is a customized Go routine scheduler over Go runtime. Uh, basically, the idea of a CFS scheduling is to give every thread a logical clock which records the duration of threads on CPU time. Different priority settings of threads, different speed, pass, uh, different speed time passes of its logical clock. And CFS scheduler would prefer to choose 
the thread which has the most behind logical clock to run. Because the scheduler sync is quite on fire to make such thread even more behind. After all, the scheduler's name service stands for completely fair scheduler. So if one thread is event intensive, then it would have a higher de facto priority. And if one thread is CPU intensive, then it would have a lower de facto priority. That we could call it adaptive priority adjustment. That is quite an important, important feature, which could ensure the scheduling latency of event intensive threads will not be very high even a current system is on the high CPU load due to the existence of some CPU intensive threads. Assuming we are running on an ad core Linux box and the GoMax prox has been set to add, then we supplied this add P into two pieces. One has two P and another has all these left six P. The two P part is prepared for event intensive tasks. And the left 6P part is roughly prepared for CPU intensive tasks. And to achieve that, we only need to ensure that the concurrency of the CPU intensive tasks is always no more than six. And here are four two propositions that make the idea of customizing GoRoutine schedule or go runtime feasible. The first one, event intensive task has a very small CPU, on CPU time, and there are always available P for event intensive tasks. Second, CPU worker, e, the scheduler itself is event intensive. The third, CPU intensive tasks completes these limited P resources, competes these limited, limited P resources and which are managed by our customized GoRoutine scheduler. The fourth, GoRoutine scheduler supports work scheduling. At this point, we have the ability to customize our own GoRoutine scheduler over GoRoutine. And because it's over GoRoutine, so we could implement any scheduling algorithm we want, not only CFS, there are three pattern of three patterns of CPU worker submit. Pattern one is a special case of pattern two. Pattern one is not friendly at all because it will occupy one P during its whole lifestyle, life cycle. So the best practice is this pattern should only be used by very short CPU uh, intensive tasks. Person two got a checks point FP import in, in the import parameter. And CPU intensive tasks should call this checkpoint FP from time to time. This is the point where the CPU worker scheduler suspend or resume the CPU intensive tasks. Person two is a special case of person three. Person three, we name it a hybrid task, which is a mix of CPU intensive and event intensive. In theory, pattern two is probably enough, but in practical, there may be some tasks that are not so easy to split into CPU intensive or event intensive, especially for those already for, for those already exist already existing Go projects. Here is a demo of pattern three. Uh, basically, we try to extract all the event intensive part of hybrid task, and thus all its left parts are CPU intensive. The import of event core FP should be a event intensive task or new, which means a checkpoint, which is same as the checkpoint FP in this case. Here, is this that transition of one, ta one task from the perspective of CPU worker scheduler. Step one, the newly created task has been just uh, submitted to CPU worker and CPU worker scheduled it to run. 
the step two, um, when performing the checkpoint FP check, the task finds that it has received the suspended instruction from the scheduler. So it, so it puts itself into the runnable task priority queue and waiting for the resume signal. At step three, the suspended task receives the resume signal from the scheduler and continues to run. Uh, at step four, the task returns P to the CPU worker scheduler and then executes the event intensive task. At step, step five, complete the execution of the event intensive task. Then the task puts itself into the runnable task priority queue and waits for the resume signal. Step six, that is the end of the, this task's life cycle. As a proof of contact, as a proof of concept, CPU Worker currently only implements a part of CS or a part of CFS and could also be said a variant of CFS. Here are some more benchmarks. Here is our second benchmark we did at the very start. FDX sync with CPU intensive tasks benchmark in Go. Um, here is the CPU intensive task definition. And here is our third benchmark, which is the FDX sync with CPU intensive tasks benchmark with CPU worker. Basically, it submits some amount of CPU intensive tasks to CPU worker at first, and then do the actual data sync latency benchmark, which means the CPU intensive tasks will be under the control of our own scheduler. Here is the definition of CPU intensive task with checkpoint, uh, which uh, have a actual Import parameter named the checkpoint FP, and in the full in the infinite for loop, and it will call it this function from time to time. Here is our benchmark result. We could see that the vanilla version of data sync latency becomes worse and worse as the amount of CPU intensive tasks grows, while our CPU worker version of data sync latency is very stable keep around uh, one milliseconds to two milliseconds. As the amount of CPU intensive task grows, uh, this is a very good result. Here is the, our last benchmark. Um, the first function is the CPU intensive task, and the second is the CPU intensive task with checkpoint. Here we got a HTTP handler Name handle checksum without CPU worker. And the last the last function is the another HTTP, uh, HTTP handler named handle checksum with CPU worker and has checkpoint. Here is the last HTTP handler named handle delay one millisecond. It's uh, it is a event intensive task. Here we do the HTTP handlers setup. And here is some laws we're going to test on our demo server. The command one is uh, a event intensive task. The command two is the CPU intensive task, but without our CPU worker, which means the vanilla version. And the command three is the CPU intensive task which under the control of our CPU worker. Here is our last benchmark result. On the left is about throughput and the right, and the right is about average latency. The first row in the table is about delay one millisecond, which means delay one millisecond is the only load in this row of 36. We could see that the throughput and average latency is very good. And the second row in this table, delay one millisecond plus CPU intensive vanilla, which means this load 
is the mix the, is the mix of delay one millisecond and CPU intensive tasks without CPU work. And we could see the performance drops dramatically. And the last row in this table, delay one millisecond plus CPU intensive CPU worker, which means the, this load is the mix of delay one, delay one millisecond and CPU intensive tasks with CPU worker. And we could see the performance becomes nice again. For more information, you could refer to this link uh, to CPU workers GitHub repository. Thank you. That's, that's all.